Hey guys, it's Johnny, and welcome to episode 108 of the Travel Like a Boss podcast. I'm here with Max Roy. Bienvenue les amis à l'épisode 108 de l'épisode uh, du podcast uh, Voyager comme un, un boss avec uh, Johnny FD, uh, <laughs> où on fait des jokes déplacés et uh, on parle uh, de web marketing. I have no idea what you just said, but welcome to the, the show, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. So uh, this is my buddy, uh, Maxence. We would just call him Max a little bit easier. Uh, we know each other from Chiang Mai, and we actually live in the same building. Uh, so we've been co-working together. And we are now, where are we, Max? Uh, in Koh Lanta, man. Yeah, Beautiful Koh Lanta. Uh, two minutes from the beach, you know, birds singing, and uh, yeah, lots of fun. Very similar to uh, Quebec, Montreal, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, very. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's only like uh, 30 degrees uh, warmer here, and <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> the ground is actually uh, green, not white. <laughs> yeah. So I keep forgetting that it's it's winter in most of the world right now. Yeah, it is, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's absolutely, man. Uh, yeah. So for anyone who is listening from uh, somewhere where it's snowing or it's cold. Send in some photos. <laughs> yeah. Either tweet them at me at JohnnyFDK or put them on my Facebook. It's also uh, JohnnyFDK. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it'd just be fun to, to watch. And then th- and then the next year when you guys make it out here, if we, can, we can bring them back up and just be like, remember this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you want to do that, I uh, would recommend uh, take a photo where you're very miserable uh, <laughs> with the snow, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It'd be good for your blog if you want to make one. Yeah, yeah. Like in Montreal, you know, uh, like they have this uh, in, in the city, this snow is like full of like gray slush, you know, in the street. Oh. So one of the best pictures for that would be when you you just uh, uh, fall on your ass uh, uh, right in the slush. <laughs> and just, just take a selfie yeah. and, just, and just say how miserable you are. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not miserable. Uh, if anything, our complaints are it's a little bit too hot here, but that can be remedied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but so the reason why I actually wanted to have uh, Max on the show is not only to talk about some of the cool stuff that we've been doing together uh, here, because we, we went on a couple of trips together, and this weekend we're actually going dirt, dirt biking. Bike riding. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. That's going to be exciting. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually glad that you're forcing me to do this, because I there was almost zero chance I was ever going to sign up for this myself, because uh, in my mind, I'm just like, uh, you know, it's dangerous, it's a waste of money, I have a scooter, I don't need a dirt bike. But when I really think about it, I'm like, well, I don't want to do it. It'll be fun. It's going to be an adventure. I think I'll enjoy it. Yeah. Because I went ATV riding in Chiang Mai, and that was also forced to me. I wasn't going to go, but my friend Chris was like, come on, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And I had a great time. So I think this would be the same. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, I think uh, the dirt bike is, is just as nice as the, the ATV. And, like, you know, like just think about like riding super fast on the beaches, you know, and going in the little trays of Koh Lanta. And then through the jungle, too. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll report back and see uh, how that is. Uh, but Max has also forced me to join a mastermind group. <laughs> and that's actually the main reason I wanted to have him on the show today is the mastermind, even though I've, I've always heard about this, and I bet you guys listening at home, you guys have heard of the term mastermind or you've heard, you know, the benefits of it, but you may or maybe you're not a part of one yet. And I'm going to, in this episode, hopefully we can kind of convince you some of the benefits of it, but also give you some tips on how to start your own. And you don't have to spend, you know, a ton of money to join one. You can basically just create your own. Uh, so how, how did uh, the idea for the mastermind start? Like, why, why did you decide to, to force me to join one? <laughs> Um, yeah, basically the mastermind, man, I think, uh, I'm just, you know, it's been like, uh, two years, uh, and, uh, would you like me to give a little intro on, on kind of my business yeah, and uh, what I'm doing? Okay, cool. So, uh, just to put, uh, put you guys in perspective, um, so what I'm doing, I'm selling, uh, uh fitness programs. So I help, uh, men lose weight, um, uh, in, in the French market. So, uh, basically uh, I have a, a 90 day, uh, fitness program for men to work out at home and lose up to, uh, 36 pounds in 90 days. Uh, 36 pounds, is my best client results. And so my clients uh, lose anywhere usually from like 15 to 35 pounds in 90 days with the program. And, uh, so I've been working on that program for the last, uh, two, uh, about, about two years, I would say. And, uh, in the last uh, six months I've been like, we're, uh, it, it, it really, uh, racked up. And so now we have uh, uh, 2,200 uh, clients. Um, we gross uh, over $50,000 a month in uh, sales. And uh, yeah, we it's it's all paid traffic. So we've generated like, uh, you know, tens of millions of ad impressions. Uh, 
and uh, yeah, we have over a million clicks a year, and uh, yeah, so so it's, it's uh, it it grew pretty big, um, and so yeah, that was just give you a little intro uh, about myself, um, and and brag a little bit also. Uh, yeah, well, you know, what? sometimes it, sometimes it's good to brag, man, yeah. because then I think what it is is. I mean, I think most people just assume if I'm going to have someone on the show, they're probably pretty successful at what they do, you know, whether it's monetary wise or at least they have the knowledge where I know it's going to help people. Um, but if, if nothing else, it's the mindset, you know, and I, I, I think what I've learned from you the most uh, compared to a lot of other people I've hung out with is you've completely shifted my mindset for marketing. Uh, but let's let, before we get into that, let's actually talk about the actual mastermind. What, why did you... Uh, why did why yeah like why why were you like Johnny we're we're doing this mastermind you you're you're a part of it let's go yeah so basically um you know I think uh the difference between like really successful entrepreneurs and uh, not successful entrepreneurs is actually just it I, you know I, I I don't think it's like actually in in uh, doing like selecting very intelligent actions you know it's it, it it's actually just doing shit you know. Like every day, you know, doing uh, something that's that's you know uh, in in some way relevant and uh, that's gonna move you forward. But every fucking single day, you know, and I think that's one of the, the secrets uh, to uh, success. It's very uh, it's it's almost deceiving, you know, as simple as as it is. Um, but uh, and and the reason for that, I think, uh, is uh, you know, is I think humans were not very wired to uh, you know get up and and do everyday complex tax, uh, tasks like that and uh you know do all this mental effort and uh, you know we do i, I do I procrastinate a lot you know and I, I do and so i think accountability is very very important so having enough uh of uh want and uh don't want kind of forces in your life so uh having a clear goal you know and visualizing and knowing what you want and moving forward to that is i think is really good but i think what you really need also is a safety net where you have like kind of a support system where uh if you don't do what you gonna, you don't do what you plan to do, then you're gonna have like people to face, and uh, you're gonna have like uh, uh, a, a, a system that's gonna support you in, in keeping to, uh, uh, keep doing what you you need to do. So last year, I uh, I actually hired a coach, and I paid like I think like eight hundred bucks a month or something just to every week I would that we would do we would select actions for my business, and then uh, the other week we, I would report on it and. It actually helped a lot, you know. Just knowing that I would report to the per- to the coach the other week, it really helped. Uh, just the accountability of it, and uh, so I decided, hey, you know, why not do this for free? Start like a, a little group of very motivated people, and uh, do a little system where we select actions together, and uh, yeah, let's just like uh, put some accountability uh, towards each other. And uh, so we're gonna have like two very important elements. So we're gonna very intelligently select our tasks, so they're very high leverage and very well. Uh, focused and then we're gonna uh, wrap up some very good accountability around that and so i think we're gonna i, I thought that this would be probably the, the best way to start my year um so i, I think like you know I, I i i almost forced you to join in and and uh i it, it was it was uh also very selfish you know it was very selfish uh also for me you know but i think everybody's benefiting from it uh, yeah i think so too actually so do you remember uh when you first sent me that message saying hey uh johnny like i, I want to start next friday what did i reply back i don't remember what you replied by but i, I remember feeling like geez I'm, am i gonna be alone in this room <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i kind of brushed you off i was like oh yeah yeah it sounds interesting but i think i'll be out of town <laughs> and then you, you replied back saying like like okay well then we will move it to the next friday because it's very important for you not to miss the first one first um the first week meeting yeah yeah and I was like, I, then I felt kind of cornered. I was like, uh, okay, I, yeah, I'd be because I'll be here in town the next week, so I didn't have an excuse. I was like, okay. And then, do you remember where you found me five minutes before uh, yeah. <laughs> the actual meeting started? Yeah, I remember because I pushed, I pushed you so much. You know, I think like five times the, the day I was like, hey Johnny, you know, you're gonna come. It's like, it's like, you know, remember it's at three p.m. right now. Huh? Actually, even before that, I think a week before you sent me a document saying, uh, "Please uh, write d- review this and write down your three goals and three <laughs> uh, action tasks for the week." And you had written like an essay, and mine was still blank. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And uh, actually, I don't even think I opened it. I think I sent you, like, I sent you a message like the day of saying, "Oh, uh, can you send me the link again?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. And uh, but actually, you know what? I, I knew you would. Uh, I knew you'd show up and uh, you'd kill it, man. Yeah, I knew it. 
anyway. well you know what I, I have to i have to thank you for uh really you know drilling it and and like you know no basically no knowing that i would benefit from it so you had no um i guess you almost had like no fear of forcing me to do something that you knew was going to benefit me maybe maybe that's why you, you're a good personal trainer because you, you you know i would imagine when you're training people you'll force them to do things that they are either uncomfortable doing or they're lazy to do but you know they should do it and you know it'll benefit them and you know they will thank you for it later yeah i think uh, that's you know what it makes me think of it's not even personal training it's actually a higher level than that and uh, I would I would say, you know, people talk about marketing as if it's kind of something with a label on it. It's like CrossFit, you know, marketing. It's like we need those words to, uh, uh, it's like symbols to, to uh, you know, to put get complex uh, systems of ideas together in a symbol word. But actually, marketing, what it really is, is um, a persuasion, you know. And I think the best marketers, um, they have the basic ingredients to be able to um, feel deep inside that if they do not mm, uh, almost force the person to take uh, or take whatever needs that they have to to, to force the person to take the, ac- the action that they need to do, they're making a disservice to the person by not forcing them to take the action that's the best benefit to them. And so I think when you have like that perspective, like you know your product is, is of so much value that is... Um, that is, it would be a disservice not to take every manipulative action for that person to take action um, and and uh, buy your product. When, when you're in that mindset, uh, everything be- become much much easier, you know. And uh, I think there's a big difference between like knowing it intellectually and really really feeling uh, feeling it, you know. These are one of the, the biggest lessons I've learned uh, from hanging out with Max and having him drill these same things in my mind over and over again every single week because it's now it's now been a few months since we've been uh, in this mastermind together uh and the very first thing that i i had learned from him is how much work he puts in every single week i like every single week i feel like a bum i feel like a lazy bum when i show up and he asks oh you know what were your tasks what were your high level tasks that last week what have you accomplished and i barely have two or three things that i list and Max has been pretty nice about it. He hasn't like, um, you know, he, he hasn't made me feel bad uh, intentionally. <laughs> but those things that I did were the things that he had put on under his like bonus one hour tasks. And he would literally have like a list of like 14 items of high level items that per, that increases income or increases business or get him more traffic done. And what that made me realize is first, I'm lazy. All right. But it's not even that. I was I was asking myself, I was like, why am I lazy? Like why like why am I done doing this? You know, because I want to do it and I have the time, I have the energy, I have the skills. I really had to ask myself, I did I had to dig deep and I asked myself, why am I not doing these things? And I realized it's because I spend all my valuable hours in the day, the first couple of hours, responding to like customer service questions or emails that I don't really need to it shouldn't really shouldn't be me responding to. Uh, or just dealing with stuff that like I honestly don't mind doing, but it's it's not going to move me forward. You know, it's those things that like some people say that when you become an entrepreneur and you start like let's say you start like um like you know a lot of a lot of entrepreneur businesses like either coaching or um having a you know having a course or even starting a store, you end up giving yourself a new job, and it's not a bad thing. I, I don't want people thinking like there's any regrets because this is the best job in the world you know i wake up when i want uh i you know i can go to the beach when i want i can work from wherever i want and i'm getting paid more now than i did at my normal job so why wouldn't i want this job right but what max had made me realize is that's step one the step one is that location independent freedom uh maybe even scaling the business to make money but then the next step the higher level step that that i need to start doing is completely freeing myself from these, you know, these day-to-day tasks where I don't even have to think about, I don't have to waste any of my mental energy. And, and one thing I learned about Max is like, wh- like you don't do that. You don't, you don't answer customer service emails until what time? Um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's, I would say like, thanks for that. I really appreciate you saying that. Um, the, I, I do work a lot. That's, that's a, that's a fact that I always worked a lot. Always been uh, hard on myself. Uh, and uh, it's been good things. It's been a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, because uh, you know sometimes uh, 
it's good to have that kind of um, uh, you know you manage yourself and uh, you give yourself a lot of rest and all that that, that that's that's good for longer term you know um, but yeah man I'm not the best at outsourcing I would say you know I think you're probably better than me at outsourcing but I think what I'm good at is actually um, I'm I'm good I would say I'm good at like Tim Ferriss said you know ask for uh, forgiveness uh, not permission and I'm kind of good at that and that's why you know sometimes uh i have you know i have customers i have a lot of customers that i i sometimes i need to deal my customer service person cannot deal with the issues directly so i need to uh do their that special refund or uh or answer that urgent request or you know whatever it is um that i need to do uh but i just sometimes i just won't do it uh usually like if you send me an email i probably won't answer at least it will it will take at least like two or three business days for me to answer your email uh, because uh, I will never answer emails after uh, before 5 p.m. every day. And a lot of days I just don't answer emails because I just want to keep doing my, my focus thing after 5. And uh, yeah, Friday's afternoon I will clear up my emails, you know. I will, but uh, aside from that, no, I don't. I never, like those four hours at the start of the day, they're, they're so precious, you know. That now, uh, before I used to be email addict, you know, I, I couldn't start the day before uh, without clicking on that. Now I'm kind of disgusted almost by the email box, you know, because it is just filled with so much um, reactivity. You know, it's just filled with s- the email box for me. What it is, it, it's other people's agenda, you know, forcing it onto yourself. So and and so as soon as I enter the email box, the em- the first thing I know is I'm going to be doing stuff that's valuable to other people and not me. And so I'm kind of uh, so. So when I'm doing my thing, I'm depositing into my life account. And when I'm the, in, in the email box, I'm withdrawing my most precious resource in life, which is my time, and I'm sending it to other people's account, you know? So, but you, you got to do that, you know, because, uh, you know, life, uh, it, it's it's all a matter of, uh, you know, working together. And But uh, I think pay yourself first, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's great advice. And well, like so one of my goals uh, for this next six months is to be able to completely free myself uh, 100% from, you know, these, like, you know, little issues. And, and usually it's not a big deal because I have customer service people who take care of the majority of the problems. Uh, but just because of the time zone difference where I want to catch people at the end, at least by like the end of the day and, and get back to them if they do have a question about something. Um, and because of that, I'm burning up all my mental energy, pleasing other people before I'm using that energy to grow or create a new business. And Max has helped me realize that, like, the limited amount of mental clarity that we have each day is better utilized creating value for other people. So instead of, you know, me, you know, making one or two people happy that um, maybe, like, a shipment got sent to the wrong address by accident and, you know, it was nobody's fault, but now we have to track it down. What is a better use of my time is, is, you know, creating something that will really help a lot of people versus you know, trying to patch up problems uh, for, for one person, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Really but, good with that. Uh, so the other things that, that I've kind of learned uh, is what we were talking about earlier, uh, where you said, like, it's better to, if you know something is good for people, that, like a service or product that you have, whether it's getting people in shape or helping them, um, you know, clear up their day or have less stress or make money. If you know you have a good product, it's almost your it's almost your duty to like force them uh, in whatever way you can to take action. And with marketing, uh, me and so me and Max actually have very different views on marketing and maybe I'll end up, you know, in the middle somewhere. Uh, but it's really nice having him stretch my, like my, my, my mindset, almost like a rubber band <laughs> where my mentor uh, with all this online marketing stuff was, was Anton Crayley. And for the longest time uh, for like the first <clears throat> two or three years that I knew him, he was Mr. Soft Sell. He like would only email you one time and he said, hey, here's a course. Uh, if you want to buy it, here it is. If you don't want to buy it, it's okay. <laughs> and he just never forced it. He never pushed it. He never had any crazy marketing messages. Uh, his sales video was him in his mom's uh, living room <laughs> uh, saying, hey guys, I'm Anton. Uh, you know, I've uh, done really well with this concept called dropshipping and I'd like to teach you how to do it. Uh, if you'd like to join, uh, here's some information. Here's exactly what you need um, to get started. Here's even all the all the steps. Uh, but if you want to take my course, I can show you through videos how to do it. And that's it. You know, like no hard sells, nothing. And then once every like 
year, he would send one email saying, hey, guys, just to let you know, uh, you know, I've, I've been adding more content. So it's time to raise the price. So next month, uh, the price is going to go up to, you know, by by, you know, X amount of money. And he did this for like two or three years. And this is the, the, the method that I've been following. I'm like, you know, what? I like this a lot. This is like the best way. It's not, you know, I see like these other um, internet marketing products that like do these flash sales or say like, you have to buy now. You have 12 hours left and you see a countdown timer and like, buy, you know, like, you know, do you want results now? You have to buy now. And like really, really hardcore messages. So I used to really shun away from that thinking like, that's bad. Um, the way Anton does is better. But what's crazy is in the last, I would say, three to six months, Anton, especially after he redesigned the course and he added all his new content to it, he has completely switched. I don't, I don't know if anyone signed up for, for his email list lately, but it is hardcore now. It is like saying like, you know, like if you don't act now, you know, like, you know, like the price is going to go up again. Uh, or like why, why, why you've been rating, you know, like <clears throat> you've been on my email list now for X amount of time. Every day that you wait, you're losing money. That, that like you're not getting started, you know, like things like that, like really like uh, time sensitive, um, you know, like big marketing words saying like, <clears throat> you know, like act now, act fast, stuff like that. And at first I was like, whoa, that's really weird. That's really unlike him. And the funny thing is when I hang with him, he's still not like that. He's still like such a genuine down earth guy. But what it is, is exactly what you said, where he knows his product is good. He knows that if people actually sign up for the course and, and actually take action, they will end up uh, doing well and they're going to they're gonna be happy. Uh, there's so many success stories. There's so many people using Anton's method that is successful that he's basically decided like, well, if I can help more people, why not hire a great copywriter uh, uh, and someone who does like really, really like cool email marketing or, um, you know, like these crazy launches and why not, uh, you know, basically like, you know, really harshly convince people to take action yeah i mean for me is that the way i see it is uh just like just an example you know like johnny and the listener um just think about yourself like your best friend um is uh right now he's in a like completely abusive relationship with a girl that's like really really bad for him you know and uh you've been dating a lot of girls you know like you're really good with girls and uh you're, but it's your best friend, you know. He's 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 a good guy. He's good in in many ways in his life, and uh, but he's just with this this girl, you know. She's 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 not hot, you know. She's not nice. She's really abusive to him, and uh, you know this relationship make him uh, makes him like really unhappy. You know this is gonna impact his life really negatively in the next uh, years ahead. You know, you know probably his career is gonna go bad because of that. You know his health also is gonna go bad because of that. You know he's gonna lose in so many ways. But you also know this guy has a lot of potential. You know, you know this guy. Uh, he's your best friend. You know him for a long time, and you know he could get like a girl that's ten times better. You know, and uh, you know you, he could benefit from many ways from that. You know, having having like a better life, better happiness, and all the all these things. And so you go down and uh, you you invite him to your place and you, you have a beer with him and uh, and and now you know he's uh, he's, he's kind of the verge and he, he, on the verge of, of uh, doing something you know either like staying with that girl or not and so you start talking to him about it and um, let's say you have only one ch one chance one shot at talking uh, to him out of it you know and so what are you gonna say you know are you, it's your best friend. Are you going to say, hey, buddy, you know, it's, it's, it's not so bad, you know, like, you can't, you can't keep going with that girl, you know, like, uh, you know, you might be, you might, it might not go exactly the way you want, but, you know, it, it won't be so bad, you know, you can keep being mis half miserable and uh, keep procrastinating on that and not being the best you can. And it's okay, man, you know, what's important is you're uh, okay, happy, and, uh, you know, no, you're not going to say that, you know, you're going to say like, hey, buddy, what, what the fuck are you doing, you know, like, you, you're better than that, what are you doing? You know, like I want, I want this girl out like next week. Do something about it now. You know, and uh, you're not gonna take like it's it's like a doctor that's prescribing medicine. You know, you're not gonna take you're not gonna go half-assed about it because the only way you would go half-assed about it is think about it is you're not really it's not really your best friend. You don't care about him that much. You know, because if you didn't care, who's gonna tell this guy that uh, it's not so bad? Think about it. It's, it's probably the people that don't care about him. They're gonna because they don't want to uh, offend offend him, you know. So like the the girl at at, at his job is probably gonna tell him, no, oh, it's not so bad. She looked like a nice girl, blah blah blah, and uh, she's gonna like water down her, her message because she doesn't care about him, you know. 
So I think it's the same way with uh, with marketing. It's actually taking that stance. Marketing, I, for me, is persuasion is always an ethical dilemma. It is never clear, you know. It is never uh, right or wrong, you know. It's you're never uh, fully white or fully black, but you gotta take that stance, you know. You're gonna be like, um, I believe this is right for you, and I'm not gonna l let you do something that's that's wrong for you. And yes, there's a chance I'll, I'm gonna be wrong, you know. There's a chance um, I, I I misjudged you and I was wrong, um, and I have a, a money back guarantee for that. And you can come to me after, and I will gladly uh, give your money back for that. But uh, for now, I'm not going to water down my message as if I didn't care about you. And, you know, just not to offend the other people that, that I don't care about. You know, so, um, so yeah, that's, that's the way I see it. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the, when you put it into that perspective, it really does make sense. And it's the same thing, you know, if you're a female listener and, you know, you're dating a guy who doesn't treat you well, maybe he, like, doesn't spend any time with you. He like, doesn't give you affection. He like he, you know. Let's say he's a loser, right? Would you want your friends be like, oh yeah, it's okay. Like that's just the way it is. That's you know relationships up and down. Or would you want your friends to be like, look, we're going to Vegas tonight. You need to break up with him right now. There's gonna be so many hot guys there. There's gonna be you know like there's gonna be so much excitement. So many you know and you know maybe like they don't um, address. They're not gonna be the ones to bring up like oh also. You know, there's a good chance that uh, you're going to be really sad if you see him with another guy or another girl or another guy, I guess. Uh, or like, oh, yeah, like it's also like a bit lonely to be single. No, it's not their, it's it's not in your best interest for them to bring up all the the downsides of, you know, of taking the action. It's their job to just talk about the upsides. And, you know, and as a, you know, as an adult, you know, you have the option to always go back to something, right? So especially with the money back guarantee, it's even easier. Like with the relationship, there's no such thing as a relationship back guarantee. If you, you know, if you end it, maybe it's gone, right? But with every single course out there, there's some kind of money back guarantee, like 60 day, 30 days, 60 days. Um, and that course's responsibility, I think the biggest mistake that I've been making is like, is I'm being just too soft and too passive almost, you know, where... Whenever I rebrand uh, Ernest Affiliate, or if I ever come out with an, another course, I'm following Max's advice, I'm, and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to make this the best course possible where I know it's going to help people, and if for whatever reason it doesn't, they can just get their money back, but in the sales video, in the uh, in, in the promo and stuff, before that you actually see the course, I'm really going to stress and highlight the, the benefits of it, and my job is going to be to get you excited to take action today. And not put it off for three months or six months or a year. And I think the reason, the number one reason why Anton, he, he went this route. And if you guys want to see his new marketing message, it's AntonMethod.com. It's because every time he was like really nice and passive to people and just kind of like told them like, oh yeah, by the way, we're going to raise the price um, next month. One, every single time he's raised his price and, and he's done this now, you know, many times in the last couple of years as he's added more content. People still, regardless of what he says and how much uh, advanced warning he, t he gives people, afterwards people always complain. The number one biggest complaint is, "Man, why'd you raise the price? Why, you know, like I, like when I when I checked it, you know, last month it was only a thousand dollars, and now it's a thousand five hundred, you know, or and the same thing happened when it was, the course was five hundred dollars and it went to, went up to seven fifty, and he said like, no matter what I say, like and how much uh, uh, advanced warning I give people, the same freaking people sit complain are like um like oh yeah like why did you raise the price why did you raise the price I, you know when i checked it last and then here's the th key word is they had the opportunity to have uh, bought it three months ago or six months ago one year ago maybe even two years ago when they first heard about it and the fact that they didn't maybe that's anton's fault maybe he should have uh, been more of an aggressive marketer when the price was 500 dollars because those people not only would they have saved a thousand dollars by buying it at the cheaper price, but maybe they would have gotten started with their dreams and had a successful store 365 days ago, and they would have made back more money. So maybe by Anton not marketing hard enough in the beginning, that has caused people to end up losing money because they didn't take action. Yeah, yeah, I totally. I mean, it's. I think uh, it's. It's it, when you say like aggressive, it always reminds me that. People, we really need to uh, be careful about this word aggressive in marketing because the way I see it is the difference between um, there's a, a bit, between like a drug dealer and a doctor. 
they both sell you drugs, right? Uh, the doctor is going to uh, prescribe you drugs and the drug dealer too. And it can be like, you know, of course, it's not the same kind of drugs, but it's, it's, it's uh, basically they sell you the same, uh, same kind of product, you know? Uh, the difference is uh, the drug dealer the, first doesn't have your best interest in the heart. The doctor does. And uh, the other difference is um, doctor is uh, compassionate. You know, it does. They're going to push both as hard to sell. They're going to. Like the doctor is gonna tell you, doctors. I never seen a doctor like, um, uh, you just take this medication. You know, you know you, you're gonna, you're in uh, cancer terminal phase. You know, uh, you might want to do like, uh, you know, like uh, cancer treatments. And might you might want to check it out. You know, I never. No, it's it's like you gotta do this. You're gonna start next week. You're gonna do that every week. If not, if you don't do that, then you're gonna die, and that's it. You know, and uh, it is very assertive. You know, it's very affirmative. It is very aggressive. You know, it's like. This is the way. This is the way you gotta go, you know. And but it is taking responsibility in a compassionate way. Versus the drug dealer is is uh is it might be just as aggressive, but doesn't have your best interest in heart and uh, doesn't care about you. It doesn't is not compassionate about you. So I think yeah I think we must uh, be very careful. There's a big difference between like being an affirmative, aggressive, assertive marketer and a high P marketer. And uh, it, it, the difference is, uh, is 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 in is in you know like uh, uh, hypey marketers they, they'll inflate the claims they're lie they're gonna uh, do bunch of analytical shit and um, that is bad marketing that is marketing that makes you look like a really bad you know that makes you lo- lose your reputation attract the wrong customers and uh, and it's it's really bad uh, in my opinion yeah that definitely makes sense so like for example if Anton said, like, you can make a million dollars overnight. That would be terrible, uh, you know, uh, marketing. But at the same time, if his claims are, uh, mo- you know, like, so the- here's the truth is most students take about two months of working to get their stores up and get their first sale, uh, which to a lot of people is a very long time. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's it's shorter than than not doing it, right? And then let's say like the average person makes between one and three thousand dollars a month in profit. All right, if he ha- if he you know if he exaggerated that and said like in two days you can make twenty thousand dollars, yeah, that would be terrible. And I don't think you know I, I think that would destroy his reputation, his brand, everything. But if he really stresses and he's like like start today, you know, and within two months you can have a business. You know, and you can start, you know, generating, you know, uh, up to three thousand dollars in passive, you know, semi-passive income online. I think you can, you know, he could still be very aggressive with that message. And like, let's say every week he emails you and he's like, "You could have been one week closer to having a store." And, you know, what have you done in the last week? You know, and he can make you almost make you feel bad. I can he can email you two months from them and say and say, if you had started right when I told you two months ago, like you would have your first paycheck by now. You know, what have you done? You know. And I think this type of, uh, you know, aggressive marketing, or what, what I would call aggressive marketing, I don't, I don't know if that's the right word for it, but I think because the product is legitimate and also uh, that there's no inflated claims, you know, the claims are like are, are realistic because this is what other people have done, then I, then I almost have no problem with how, how badly they push it because you can always just hit unsubscribe if you're like, you know, if, if you have a legitimate reason uh, or um, if you just know you're not going to do it, you can always just unsubscribe. You know, it's not one of those things where you showing up at your door and like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the thing I learned also with uh, marketing is powerful. A powerful message is always very polarizing. So imagine you you, you get in a room, you get in a stadium. There's twenty thousand people, and there is, let's say, there is ten thousand people that are pure Democrats. You know. And there's 10,000 people. They're pure redneck Republicans, you know, like the, uh, you know, like the, uh, the the most extreme kinds, you know. And you want the Republicans because your product is targeted to Republicans, and you know these are the buyers. You know these are these are the money makers. So you want to seduce them, you know. You want to, um, you you have like, let's say you have 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds, and you want to make the most. Uh, if if uh, people don't resonate with your message, they're gonna leave the stadium. So your job is to uh, keep as much Republicans in the stadium as possible. What are you going to say? You know, are you going to say something like, um, you know, I don't know, like educating our children is good for the nation. You know, something general like that, something watered down that's that's of, of no interest. Uh, that is for of interest, but it's watered down and, and doesn't correlate with the uh, 
Or are you going to say something that is like, extremely targeted and will resonate ex- like perfectly with all the Republicans? Like, let's build a wall and keep all those Mexican fuckers out of, of, of the, the country, you know, or something like that. And that would, like, piss off all the Democrats. Uh, by the way, I'm not Democrat or Republican. I don't have, like, is any political stance against or for <laughs> Republicans or Mexicans or whatever. But uh, I'm, I think I'm just telling a little joke. Now. Uh, they're saying that probably if you said that, all the Democrats would be fucking pissed off at you. They'd throw you tomatoes, you know, they'd be angry and they leave the stadium and all the Republicans would say, yeah, yeah. And the thing is with that is your your message was very polarizing, you know, and the, there was two sides of it. First, the Republicans, they acclaimed you. But also the other sign that was just as important is the Democrats threw tomatoes at you. So if your message was not powerful, uh, first the, the Republicans wouldn't have not cared, but also the Democrats would have not uh, threw you tomatoes or, or, or things like that. So usually I find when you're the, the group of people that doesn't matter to you um, starts to get angry at you, emotional about you, doesn't like you, it's usually a good sign. Because it means usually that um, you're uh, impacting the, the right people, you know? Um, so actually, I think this is very important to piss off uh, a lot of people. That's why I don't uh, listen to non-customers. So if customers send me critics, uh, unless it's, it's, we read them all, like my, my customers, are, they'll, they'll read them. And uh, if it's constructive, we'll, we'll act on it. But usually if uh, the, uh, I got critics, you know, like that, are, that didn't give me money, I usually won't listen to them. Because they're not the people I care about, and you know that's such, actually such a good point. And uh, one of the things that that I learned from the mastermind and and I implemented for myself was I Max had convinced me to send out a survey to all of my customers, all, everyone who actually bought Ernest Affiliate at my course. And the survey is called Delighted, so you can you guys can check that out for your own business. But yeah, Delighted.com. Be- yeah, and before that, I was assuming that people, you know, my, my customers like the course, but I really didn't, didn't know, right? I assumed I had a good product, but I really didn't know. I didn't have any metrics, right? Uh, and the only thing I actually was on my mind, and actually one of the reasons why I didn't push the course harder was because I would get comments from people uh, who were, you know, who would like say like, oh, like, you know, you need to sh- uh, sh- teach us this in the course. You need to show us this in the course, or you need to uh, do this, do this, right? But what I realized is, None of the, my actual paid customers were complaining. I think they're, they, uh, so uh, all these people that were, you know, that were kind of clouding my judgment, these are non-customers. These are people actually who never bought my course and they were just asking for a lot of stuff. So when I sent out my email, my my uh, customer service email, uh, and this is like a, they could do it, you know, anonymously through, through the service. I realized that a vast majority, like it was over 80% of my customers were either uh, happy or extremely happy. And it was only uh, a few people who were unhappy. And I, when I found, and then it also uh, gave them a way to tell me what they were unhappy about. And all I did was I addressed those issues. And it turned out those, those issues almost had nothing to do with, um, with what non-customers wanted. And after that, I realized, I was like, number one, I have a great product that I should be very proud of. Uh, I should also um, fix the the couple small things um, that my paid customers were unhappy about, mainly that the last couple automation videos were not uploaded yet. Uh, and honestly, that was one of those things that I put off for way too long. But in my mind, it was because I was, I was still kind of split testing things for myself and uh, making sure that my recommendations for tools I use for automation were... Uh, was what I really wanted to recommend. And that's why I kind of kept putting it off. And I kept thinking like, oh, well, most of my uh, students aren't at that level yet, so they don't need that video yet. But what I realized is some people were there, they were unhappy that it wasn't complete. So I'm very happy to say that because of that, uh, I learned a couple of things. Uh, but more importantly, it made me finish my my course. So if you go to, if you sign up for Ernest Affiliate now, it is 100% complete. And, but more, even more important than that, what I realized is for people who aren't in the course, who have never paid to join, they really have no say. <laughs> you know, their say is they can either not join, and which is fine because they don't need to join, you know. Uh, and I shouldn't worry about what they want. I should worry about what my actual paid customers want. Yeah, absolutely. Because then you like to be, you want to please like the Democrats, you know. 
it, it's it's like yeah yeah I, t- I totally get you yeah that's that's i mean especially if you got like a low barrier to entry you know like you don't have a course that's like uh, twenty thousand dollars to get in you know uh i think it's like uh, 200 bucks or something uh, you know and you got a money back guarantee for anyone that's uh, interested in building a serious business that's going to generate thousands of dollars a month you know what what is the barrier to entry to that is it's, yeah. it's, it's, so, it's, so i had this one person <laughs> who uh, kept commenting on all my income reports saying like, um, I want you to show me your dashboards. Uh, I want you to log in and show me your ba- dashboards and, and show me like a video of you doing whatever. He's like, he's like, I want your, your, um, your password to your dashboard so I can see like how much money you're making in the back end. Uh, and, and I'm like, first off, who, who are you? Right? <laughs> yeah. why, like, why would I like, I would, like, why would I show this to you? And then I was like, what? Do, and I was like, are you, like and he, they, and I was like, look, this stuff is like most of the stuff is in my in my course, anyways, you know. And they wanted so much, and I thought about it, and I was like, they're not even in my freaking course. All right, so if you if they're in my course, I'd probably do it to be honest. And here's a here for every single person who's in my course and who's a paid member of Ernest Affiliate. Anytime you see me anywhere in the world and you want to see any of my dashboards, I'll show it to you. And, and, you know, that is what I'm, one of the things I'm throwing out there right now. But if you're not a freaking member of my course, you never paid to be a member, you do not have this fucking privilege. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things I learned with uh, J. Abraham, which is a great uh, marketing uh, mind, um, is, uh, oh, no, no, that, that, that's from Dan Kennedy, actually, which is free advice is actually most of the time is detrimental to the person. So giving free advice to people that feel entitled to have it is actually most of the time is detrimental to them. Because uh, they have the, the, the people that usually want the most the free advice that feel the most entitled to get your free help and that will feel um, upset bec- because you don't give them the free help is that this mental bias that the information you're giving away is not uh, val- valuable enough um, to, uh, to pay for. And so if they're not willing to pay with their money, for you, for your advice, they won't pay. Uh, uh, they won't pay with their attention or their time. It's the same thing, you know. So basically, by helping them with your free advice, you're training them to keep thinking that um, uh, that information is not valuable, you know. So and what you do with free information? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The last time I actually paid attention like really hard to something that was free, just because it's free, you know. I never. I n- I will if I pay like a, a lot of money to a course. That's when I'm gonna do even only a hundred dollars. That's when I'm gonna do it. Like I'm gonna sit down and go- do everything for two weeks about that course. You know, watching a video, free video on YouTube, even if it's really good. You know, most of the times is is just uh, you know is is just information. You know, whatever or podcast. You know, it's casual information for me, just because it's free. So so you're losing your most valuable resource by actually. I know it sounds kind of weird, you know, but I believe the best thing to do with these people is yes, your free stuff. Give, give your self help free stuff. Give it to them. You know, it's there. It's for them to, to uh, check out. But if they want your personal help, you know, and they're actually requesting like a lot of things, what we do at my company is uh, I just have a, a very simple message that I encourage them to become a, a client. I just say like, hey, thank you. You know, thanks so, so much for your question. Um, my, my assistant just, they, they, that's what they, uh, she replies to them to. And uh, she just say like, hey, thank you so much for your question. Uh, Max Sense is too busy with all the clients he, he's got. You know, but he's happy to help you if you want to uh, make the investment. Otherwise, he'll, her all's, uh, here's all our free resources. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, that's it, you know? Yeah, I think that that's super smart. You know, and I need to really start doing this. Like, so f- from now on, uh, if you are going to leave, like, a, let's say a comment on my blog and you're not a member of a course, I'm not going to spend half an hour writing up like a detailed response that only helps you if it's something that like i know will help like a lot of people uh, you know or something that i wanted to talk, write about anyways maybe i'll create a whole blog post about it right because i do like giving free information but i think no longer am i going to spend waste my mental energy helping like a specific person who's not going to take action anyways that's not gonna you know especially people that feel entitled to it you know i think if someone is like really humble and they're like you know johnny like now, you know, I really appreciate the the free content you give us. And, I, you know, I would really, really like uh, your advice on how to do this. Yeah, I'm very happy to help them. But if someone just, is just like, hey, give me this. Now give me this. And give me this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to waste any time with them anymore. Yeah. Uh, and especially if they're going to do it anonymously and they're not even going to, like, bother uh, making an account uh, or linking, you know, linking it to the Twitter or their Facebook or, like, having a profile photo or even having a name. Why would I help these people? Like and why like and the people listening to this and you know 
I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the majority of you listening to this, you're just like normal good people, and you're thinking like, 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 oh, do these people even exist? Like, they exist, and like, I cannot believe, I, I don't understand why some people feel entitled. You know, I don't know if it's they, they have a mental problem. You know, if they grew up uh, having everything handed to them and they never had to work for anything, uh, or they're just so depressed and unhappy, or maybe they have such bad social skills that they just don't understand that, like, in this world that we live in, in society, like, we need, like, there's nobody owes you anything, you know? And you have the choice as a customer to stop reading the blog, <laughs> you know? You have the choice not to ever buy a product, you know? But it is not your duty and not your job to try to, like, rape as much information out of someone uh you know when when you have not earned it yeah yeah i mean and and uh i you know i won't say i have a ton of free and free info and it is really good you know i think my free stuff on my side is really good i um, mean i i take a lot of time into it but the reason i put it there is because i know the, f the free stuff is actually good for my superstar that are soon to become clients that stuff is for them you know, everybody's going to love it, you know, but the superstar clients, that's going to be a stepping stone for them. They're going to look at this and that's what they need. Sometimes that's what they need to say, this stuff is so good, I want more and they're going to buy, you know, and that's for them. Um, and and uh, the the other people that just uh, do the free stuff and want more of it, you know, um, and won't pay like, you know, uh, whatever my lowest program price is, then, uh, uh, you know, I mean... I, I don't care. I know it sounds like, uh, you know, like people that, but you got to do it. If you want the Republicans in that stadium, you got to don't not give a fuck about the Democrats. You know, you got to be dedicated to these to these people and, and you got to be willing to piss off a lot of people, you know, because every minute you spend with somebody that's never going to invest in your product and your service and put the effort required to your product is a minute you could spend on a client, you know, so. Um, so I make that choice, you know, I make that choice of, of dedicating myself to the people that are actually invest in themselves. And, uh, yeah, that's, I, I think that's what, honestly been one of my biggest problems is I've been wanting to help those people that are unhelpable. If anything, I spend more time with them than I did like with people who are actually making uh, progress is because I feel, I don't know what it is. It's like, I almost feel like I, I need to help them, you know, but they need to help themselves. Like, you know, I can, I can provide the 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 tools or the resources or enough to get started or like point them in the direction and say like this is you know what would better for you but if someone is like so uh deep in that hole like it's it's uh, you're gonna pull all of us down you know with them you know and it's usually their choice to stay in that hole you know other people try to buy try to pull them out before but they just try like it, the these people like these trolls they it's almost like they like being in that hole they like you know being there and they don't want to escape. They don't want a hand uh, t to get pulled out of it or they don't want a ladder. They don't want a tool or map. They don't want a flashlight. What they want is for you to get close enough and uh, immersed enough where they can pull you in the hole with them so they have some company. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we I understand you because we, we're all people of contribution. We know we care about everybody. We want to make everybody better. And, uh, and, and I think that's that's a good thing. Um, but I feel, and that's why, you know, like my, my free things are available to everybody, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm happy even the people that are not, because it's not because someone, for example, is in that stage today, um, in, in that, that bad place that in 10, in 10 years or a year or whatever, they're not, they're not going to be better, you know? And so, but what I, what I think what we cannot, what we must be ruthless about is our time, you know, because time is the only resource that is uh, finite, limited, you know, and so we cannot, we have to, uh, decide, you know, decide means like, is, is, uh, is mean cutting between like, and th that's actually, you know, a great example is right here. Instead of, if these people didn't exist, we wouldn't have wasted the last 10 minutes of this podcast talking about them. We could have spent the next, <laughs> we could have spent yeah. the last 10 minutes giving you tips yeah, we're the worst. on how yeah. to grow your business, how to make more money, how to become a location dependent, how to, you know, yeah, let's I, do that. Instead. <laughs> yeah, so like, you know what? Never again. Like, we're, let's just not waste any more time on that, and let's just spend our time focusing ahead and being positive and, yeah. and yeah. growing yeah. and helping each other. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So, real quick, what 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 is what is an action that people can take, no matter what their business is, where they are now, to really you know kickstart them and get them in the right direction of being profitable? Because I think that's what people want. They want yeah. some kind of passive income or location independent income. Uh, 
that they can do from a place like where we are on the islands? Or like, what is what is something they could do? Yeah, I think. Um, uh, yeah, I like takes a couple of minutes on that. I mean, I have some notes. Uh, maybe I, I like to uh, to get through. I might be in a position where I might uh, it, what I'm doing might look a little bit harder than what most uh, people that generate an online income does. Meaning, I have a product that I created myself. You know, most people they they're not at the point of uh, having the confidence in creating themselves a product. And and uh, and things like that, but that's okay. That's okay because uh, there's always other people's product that you can sell, and and, and the the framework um, is is the same. But what I'm always trying to drill into uh, a friend's head, you know, is is that nothing happens. So no money is generated on the internet without some kind of sales system, which is usually I call a sales funnel because uh, you know it's, it's like a, a sequence of a system that generates uh, cash, you know, that generates money. And um, uh, what I mean by that is, uh, for example, uh, you see all these ads everywhere over the internet, you know, Huffington Post, whatever, they have like a huge amount of ads, but these ads are always only there because there is a sales system somewhere that is paying for those ads. So that ad you see from, uh, I don't know, like uh, uh, Agoda, for example, they sell uh, financial newsletters, and you see that ad about finances. And the only reason that this ad can be there is because Agoda makes money with their sales system, and they're paying the Huffington Post a part of that money to put the ad on. You know, so usually when you start uh, making money online, you start at the uh, you're at the furthest place from that sales machine. So you're basically selling media. So media is kind of a the bridge usually between um, uh, your audience, an audience, and a sales uh, system, for example. And so, for example, the the, the Huffington Post uh, audience, um, the media between that and the go to uh, sales system would be the ads, you know. So uh, usually, uh, people they, they will see uh, whatever it is, like uh, either it's uh, AdSense ads or um, affiliate ads you know whatever it is uh, that's kind of the way to go to uh make money online and i think that's that's a good way to start but uh what I, I like to help people realize is if you want to have a business that's making a lot more money that is scalable that you own that is secure you gotta have you gotta get closer to that sales uh, system you know you gotta own the closest to that so um, be, because to be honest with you, like, uh, from my standpoint, um, you know, media, uh, like buying ads and, and advertising and all that stuff is kind of a commodity, you know, it is a little bit like very, very replaceable. I can go to AdWords, I can go to Taboola, which are ad networks, if you don't know, um, or I can go buy direct to the side, to a site, you know, like I think in Bose, I can go all these places. I don't really care. You know, all I care about is I get the traffic and it's uh, profitable. What is really precious in my business is that sell system that I, I put in place, you know, where I have like a, um, I have a page, my lead, my lead capture page where I capture subscribers and then my upsell pages and all this process that's, that's bunched together and that got me like uh, thousands of clients. And so that's, that's really the valuable part. So you want to get there, you know, you want to get to, to, uh, to that point. So I think um, if, if you don't have a product yet, I always recommend that um, you you want you want to go to uh, to that route, you know, like like you, Johnny. Like I think you, you started actually with uh, um, you know you my start ebook or you, you started with affiliate affiliate stuff, yeah, yeah, and then you created products, right? Yeah, and I think that was a good uh, segue for me, where you know I first I first learned how to you know basically build a website just to have a website, just to get traffic, not even worrying about making money from it. Uh, how to get people to like really enjoy sharing and subscribing and things like that. And then I realized, and this is what I teach in Ernest Affiliate, it's not, it's not a big secret. Uh, you know, I, I would just go through my blog posts, my most popular ones, and I'm like, okay, what have I talked about in here that has an affiliate program? I sign up for the program, make that into a link, uh, and then I'll get paid for anytime someone signs up for whatever we had mentioned anyways. And it could have been something I mentioned six months ago I wrote already, I just never monetized. You know, um, for a good example is uh, speaking of like a go to the hotel booking system, you know, or like TripAdvisor or whatever it is. Uh, if you talk about like a hotel you stayed at, like the like, oh, what's the best hotel in Phuket or something? And you, and you had all these great photos of it or whatever. All you have to do is go back to that blog post that, you know, assuming it has a lot of traffic uh, and just replace all the links at hotel with your 
your uh, hotels.com affiliate link or your go to affiliate link and you get paid every single time someone books through there and it's really that simple you know um and it's it's a really first easy first step for people to understand like you give value you create value you know you create a platform where you can give value you create the value you get the traffic and you monetize it uh, and I, I honestly think the next step is to create your own product. And I think Max just kind of just skipped to the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, I actually, I did skip to the end. I, I mean, I've always been confident in myself, you know, and uh, I think I, I learned a lot about training. So uh, a- anyway, so I, I just, I didn't, I couldn't see another way, you know, I couldn't see me, myself selling other, other people products. Uh, but um, I think it's a good way to start. Actually, if I was to start from scratch, that would probably be a, a good way, uh, a good way to start. So I think like once you uh, kind of realize the importance of owning that uh, the business, is because when you think about it, you know, when you the closest you get to owning the sales system, is the closest you get to having the most solid type of business. Um, for example, today, you know, I, uh, I I I see a lot of people that um, they have like a uh, big uh, courses on like Udemy or Amazon, and I think it's actually really good things. These are very good platform. They get they get you a lot of traffic. Some of the people I know they have like amazing amount of customers on on Udemy. But there is there is one truth that is very uh, crucial about that is when you use uh, platform platforms like that, you don't actually own your business. Um, because for example, if you sell a book on Amazon, it's great. I mean, it's amazing. You're gonna get probably a lot of free customers, and it's it's a, it's a good thing. But you don't own the customers. You cannot pick up the phone and call these customers. You cannot send an email to these customers. You cannot upsell these customers with one click, for example, because you own their customer data. You cannot go to a person that actually buys websites and say, hey, buy my buy my business for uh, uh, f- uh, three times the amount of uh, uh, profits I made this year. You know, you cannot do these stuff, uh, this stuff because you don't own Udemy on the customers and uh, Amazon on the customers. So the most, the best place to be is when you actually own the customers. From that, then there's other ways. Uh, the second best is probably owning some kind of subscriber base, you know, uh, owning that. Uh, so at least you can keep contact with those people. You can sell them affiliate things, you know, and then probably the least uh, good place to be is when you only sell media. You know, for example, you only have a blog and you don't capture leads and you only have advertising. Then you had the weakest, you had the weakest spot because you had the mercy of like your ad network or whatever it is. And you're always going to get the smallest cut, you know. So it's, it's going to that spectrum, you know. And so keeping that in mind, I think the way to start is actually identifying an emotional need in your marketplace. So finding, uh, deciding for me was fitness. You know, I wanted, I wanted to uh, go into fitness. I, I loved it. That was the point I, I started. You know, but then the really good, the, the best way to go at it is actually finding one single specific emotional need in your market that is very powerful and just stick to it in everything you do. For me, I realized that was uh, for my customers was losing belly fat. You know, um, I realized that people didn't want to get healthier. I also realized people didn't want to get uh, leaner overall. I realized 90 percent of my clients wanted to lose the belly fat. It doesn't make sense, you know, because when you're a trainer, you, you know, you cannot spot reduce fat. Um, so so I, I learned that and, and I, I did everything focused around that. So I decided to create a product directly. But the way I would have done it otherwise is I probably would start a blog and, and, uh, and a lead, uh, a little lead magnet, a little lead capture thing. And uh, I would have started to, um, uh, you know, probably make money from, from ads. And then I would have probably started to uh, sell an affiliate product on um, how to lose belly fat. And then I would probably create my own product on how to lose belly fat. But the connective link is always the emotional lead of the customer. Because the only that's the only thing that matters. That's the only reason people are going to give you money. They don't care about you. They only care about their uh, emotional need. So that is only uh, that is always the best uh, the best place to go. And and so this so that's probably like kind of the second uh, uh, principle I, I would share. And then the last the last principle uh, would, would probably be um, what, what I call the, the, the three stages of risk, you know, on how to start uh, something new. So I, for me, uh, the three stages of, of, of risk uh, is for me um, kind of uh, three stages from the safest uh, business opportunity to go to, to the least uh, and, and, and the least like the most risky type of, of uh, um, the, the most risky way to go about it is actually the, what most people do. You know, so the first, the the, the least uh, risky way to uh, for 
for me to start something is actually uh, not start something and just do more of what already works, you know. Uh, for example, I have a product that sells really good uh, to men, you know, I'm, I might do it for women, you know, or something that's, that's really close to what already works. The second thing is to uh, study very closely competitors, you know, and then go about to, um, uh, 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 you know, study what they're doing and model them very closely. The closest, the better. And then the third thing is what most people do is, uh, you know, do completely new from scratch, you know, and, and just like throw a dart uh, in the dark. And uh, I, I think like uh, if you if you go like uh, with with uh, kind of modeling competitors, you know, you're probably going to have like a 70, 80 percent chance of success if you're doing something good. If you s just start with something completely new, you know, you might have a 10, 20, 30 percent, at least for me is what I found, you know. So once you found that that emotional need, then I would definitely go to go ahead and like study what are, what other people are doing, you know, and then build out a plan uh, from there. So that's kind of the three uh, general principles I would I would advise people to uh, to follow to uh, you know start something from from scratch. Yeah, you know I, I really like it. And it, what's funny is so first of all I want to congratulate to everyone who actually you know takes the time to listen to the whole episode. You know, uh, one of the things that I realized is that. If in the beginning of the episode I hyped it up more, like a lot of uh, podcasts do, a lot of popular podcasts do, they do, you know, where right in the beginning, imagine if in the beginning of the episode I said to you, make sure you listen to to the end of this episode because Max is going to give you three step by step tips on how to build your empire today, you know, and then, uh, you know, started the show, there would be a much higher chance of 100% of the people listening to the whole episode uh, to stay for those tips. You know, and these are the type of uh, marketing uh, tactics that make some podcasts number one on the iTunes store versus mine, which is still a very popular podcast, but it's not in the top 100. And it's because I don't do that stuff. You know, uh, I've always had the mentality where I'm like, you know what? If someone likes my show, they should listen to the whole thing anyways. You know, I, I almost think I almost feel like it's rude to um, to just skip around to look for the golden nuggets and like. That's that entitlement mentality where you're like, I paid zero dollars for this, so I want to make sure that you know, uh, I don't, I'm not, my time's not wasted, and I get at least three tips out of every single episode, you know. And what it is, I don't care about these people, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I care about the people like you who actually listen to the whole episode because you enjoy the company, you enjoy the conversation, you enjoy the journey, and you realize the importance of, um, you know, of 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 living life and like and being present and not just looking for the the three tips that you think is what you need to change your life and but but what is really probably even more important is the other 49 minutes yeah yeah but what i've decided especially after being this mastermind with with max is if i want to sell someone a product and i want to be on the top 100 list or the the top sellers i have to use those tactics even if i don't like it even though you know um that you know in the ideal world Every single person is just going to buy my product knowing that it's going to help them, even though I tell them I don't like, you know, uh, I don't ag aggressively uh, market or I don't like, you know, really hype them up. I would like them to buy the product anyways, knowing that this is something that would help them and they would really uh, benefit from it. But the truth is, the harsh reality is we need to we need to almost kind of like nudge people, or push people into the direction of helping themselves. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, would you like maybe to just send me like, like a little walkthrough of, of what I, how it about like specifically I would go about to start something new and, uh, give like very, uh, detailed resources people could use, you know, either tools, you know, that they could use, uh, to, uh, to make, uh, to, to make more money online or like resources that'd yeah. be helpful to do, uh, yeah, I mean, the easiest way is if you go to johnnyfd.com and under my recommended resources page, that is the the golden nuggets. That's where I, I list everything that actually works. Things that I personally paid for that I actually use. And the only courses I recommend on there are the ones I actually personally have paid for and use. And I know 100% they work. Hmm. Uh, and to be honest, that, that, is, that is the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are we out of time now? Or? Yeah. I mean, dude, it's been... A, can you believe it's been over an hour? Oh, really? How okay. crazy is that, right? Oh, geez, I had, like, some uh, valuable things that I wanted to... Uh, just a couple, like, maybe five minutes again? Yeah, sh sh go ahead, sure. man. Cool, cool. This, here's your bonus. If okay. you stay to the end, here's bonus tips from Max. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, so just... I told about, like, uh, marketing research. I just want to tell you guys, like, uh, a specific way I would go about doing it. I'm actually launching a new supplement right now. So um, I have, I've been to the, the beginning of this whole process again. And... Uh, 
So what I used to do market research is now nowadays, you know, you can actually uh, uh, learn everything competitors are doing. So when I'm, I'm starting a new uh, product or a new brand, I, uh, I go into a tool. It's called, uh, I use two tools. Uh, first is similarweb.com. And so first I do some basic research. I want to know like who are the biggest players, like 10, 20 biggest players. Then I select maybe like two or three that are the best, you know, I know have the, uh, are probably the biggest ones. And uh, I put all of them into like a tool called similarweb.com. And now with similarweb.com, you can have like the exact amount of traffic uh, traffic that, that these uh, websites are getting. So you can know like which are the biggest one. Usually if you, the website has the most amount of traffic, uh, it's because of the biggest, most successful one. So you select like maybe like, two or three of these and then I will like um, I would buy all their products and I would study very closely what they do um, I do is very analytical process I can take up to a week or two to just that I will, I will also use a tool called AdBeat which is a little bit more expensive but uh, worth it AdBeat allows you to uh, check out like all the ads they're using you know what traffic the ads are getting on which side it's very detailed like you can actually like see the, the nuts and bolts of every business with that once I have that data, I would compile the data. I would create, uh, I will, I will create a, a basic uh, marketing offer. You know where I would have like a, a good name, a good, um, uh, a, you know, a, a good emotional need. Uh, and uh, if if we're not talking about creating a product, I would at least like, yeah, the name is very important. So I would get you to a process. Uh, I could actually uh, put some notes about how to get a good name uh, in the resources section. Um, but yeah, and and then once once I created that, then usually I, I'm I'm uh, I have a, I have a good blueprint on, on uh, how to create uh, something and start test, testing. The last thing I would do is if if you guys are creating some kind of a, of a product, um, for me I will never ever create or produce a product before actually testing it on cold traffic. So for example, with the supplement, um, I actually I already had 15 customers now for that new supplement. But I never created a product, you know, which is, um, you know, it can, it can, it's kind of, it, it might sound unethical, but here's the way I do it. So I created the whole sales page, everything just as if I created a product. And what I want to know is actually how it costs me to get a new customer, you know, so how much I need to pay, what's my conversion rates and, and things like that. That's kind of an advanced strategy, but it's very helpful. It's a, it's a good mindset to be in. So I would create that and then I would, I would get some traffic to that page and then I would see beforehand how much it costs me to get a customer, see if it's profitable. And then if I get the green light on that, then I will, I will produce the product. And, um, yeah, that's kind of uh, some tips, uh, to get started. Also, um, what really, really helped me to get to that point today is, uh, I would say like um, everything to probably like five teachers. If you can get your hands on, uh, anything that these guys are doing. Highly recommend. Um, first one is Eben Pagan. Eben Pagan. If you guys um, uh, check out check out his stuff, Eben Pagan is extremely good at uh, sales psychology and persuasion. So anything on how to create good offers, naming, all is extremely good. I highly recommend uh, Guru Mastermind. All all his courses. I listen to them all. Um, so and uh, the second one, which is probably the second most important, is Ryan Dice, DigitalMarketer.com. These guys are really good at anything that's uh, kind of uh, the, the uh, mechanics of the of a sales funnel. Uh, anything they have a, a very good course on funnels. They have a really good course on email marketing, and uh, these guys are really good. So combining these two guys, if I would start, I would listen to everything Ben Payne is doing and everything Ryan Dice is doing. And if you're gonna go deeper, I would also uh, advise uh, Dan Kennedy, which is also really really good. Uh, Frank Kern is also really good. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much about it. Brendan Burchard, I like I, I like a little, I like um, I like two, and then there's many others. But uh, um, yeah, these top uh, top four are definitely uh, definitely really good. Yeah, I love it. And you know, just to be clear, like this is the the path to do uh, basically what what Max is doing. So if you have the personality where you are already confident. You know that you are going to do whatever it takes and you don't need to uh, take the step. You don't need to take big baby steps. You're just like, okay, I'm just going to jump straight into the deep end. Th these are fantastic resources. And these are the things that I like, I'm actually just starting to, to study now. But for me, I'm actually the complete opposite uh, where in the beginning I was, I don't want to say I was a skeptic, but I was a little bit unsure in myself. You know, where I wanted to do this, the least amount of investment, both time and money to start, 
making my first hundred dollars or my first sale where I can be like, okay, uh, I've now proven not only does the system work or that it's possible to even make money online in general, which I honestly, I cannot believe now, now I like honestly cannot believe that I used to think that I used to be one of those people who were like, oh, maybe it doesn't work. Or maybe like there's no such thing as making money uh, online or through a computer or location. <laughs> <even>. <laughs> And now it's such a joke because I'm like literally sitting in a co-working space with like 50 people who all have some kind of online business. Some people are more successful than others, but like, I, like it's almost like it was it was pretty much the same as me thinking walking to a store and be like or a mall and be like, oh yeah, it's impossible to uh, none of these stores are making sales, you know? Like oh like oh yeah, they exist, but I bet you none of them um, you know make any profit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're spending all this money on rent at this mall, and like they have all these employees. But yeah, most likely, they, like none of them are making money. <laughs> yeah, it's like selective blindness. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe like it was. Um, I mean, I honestly think it was more like my mentality just wasn't there. Where I chose not to believe it because either I was, I was more afraid of of failure than I was wanting success. I think I was like already like pretty content with my life, so I was like. Like, oh, uh, you know, I, why risk all of this to try to have a uh, successful business? And like, oh, I don't really want a business. Oh, that's not for me. You know, and I think it wasn't until a few years ago where I was really desperate of not going back to the U.S., not having a normal job that I switched. And I was like, you know what? Fuck the, f- the fear. Fuck the failure. I'm willing to take that that chance for the chance of some kind of Internet success. And honestly, my my goal was to make six hundred dollars a month. You know, so if anyone has read my books, 12 Weeks in Thailand or even Life Changes Quick, I talk like that was really my goal was and, and was to make I wanted to make six hundred dollars a month online. And now, like, doesn't that sound like a stupid it doesn't sound retarded. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's, it seems like uh, it is. It does. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, everybody's at, at his own uh, stage. But uh, but at the same time, you know what? It wasn't retarded because that was the step i needed yeah. that like that was the first step i needed you know yeah the first dollar man i was uh, that was probably the best uh yeah and you know so if it no judgment you know it, it like it depends on your upbringing you know your confidence your success with other things but if you can do it the way max has has done it go for that because it, it works yeah and then maybe like the last words Ooh. i would say about it is like money is good you know, but contribution makes your life 10 times better. You know, actually getting up in the morning. I remember the first time I actually really changed someone's life. You know, it's when my first uh, client of my program burned 36 pounds in uh, in 90 days is uh, I realized like how much better it is when you actually change this change people life when you are like instead of money driven you're mission driven you know and you get up in the morning to help people think about uh, how much of a, of a more happier meaningful life you got when you're actually changing people life and you get up for that you know and the rich old, the richest people i know on this planet they all they're mission driven you know they're they're there to change something they're there to change the world in some way you know and uh, at that you cannot fail you know, you cannot fail to to uh, to get up every morning, you know, and to uh, raise your cho- your your torch uh, above above uh, others, and uh, you know to stand up for your mission, you know, and and to really really help uh, really help people. So the, the the best goal I think is always like contributing to people, you know, help one person change their life, help ten person, help a hundred person, help a thousand person, you know, help ten thousand, help help a million, you know. And I can guarantee you, you know, you help a thousand people, there's no way you're not going to make a grand. You help a million people, there's no way you're not going to be a millionaire, you know. And you help a billion people, there's no way you're not going to be a billionaire, you know. That's how it works, you know, for me at least. And uh, and where you're going to be at that point and you're going to look at all the people, lives you change, it's going to taste really good, you know. And, and you're going to look back and you're going to be really proud, for your, uh, proud of yourself and uh really happy you know about about what you did and uh yeah i like it max thank you for some all the value that you've delivered today i'm I'm really excited uh for everyone who is on the show who's who's gotten so many great tips uh if you guys want to take action i recommend actually just rewinding this this episode with a pen and paper and just taking notes because i I know we went through a lot of information uh if you want to ask uh, max any questions uh i've added them to the facebook group the travel like a boss army uh, it's still a free group, uh, but you know what? Now after this episode, I realize you know what people don't appreciate free, right? 
So it's I'm gonna end up charging for that uh, eventually. So if you want to get in right now for free, it, just go to Facebook and type in uh, "Travel Like a Boss Army," uh, or if you sign up for the mailing list at johnnyfd.com, uh, on there I'll send you a, a personal invite um, to the sh- to the group. But also, um, I'm gonna send you you know all my best tips on, on how I got started, how I think most people should get started. Um, I wanted to quickly thank uh not only max uh and ask how can people reach you if they if they want um i guess i'm really delegated to fitness you know um so i, I guess if people want to ask like business questions and things like that i'd be happy to uh, uh jump in the group and uh, ask uh, questions here and there um and uh my uh my site is actually in french now so uh, that would be kind of hard for you people to uh to get to um but, but I'll have a link to that as well. So if someone yeah, yeah, happens absolutely. to be French and wants to join the course, they can do that. Yeah, but uh, probably the best way of uh, any business-related question to the, the group, uh, I'll be happy to... Uh, very, very excited about that. And uh, I also want to thank uh, everyone who has been leaving uh, five-star reviews on the iTunes store because this is the reason why uh, people are finding the podcast. It's because the more reviews that we get, the higher it gets recommended in the iTunes store and different podcast apps and things like that. Uh, so big thank you to uh, Jedi Juice, to Iron Fox, to S- Steffo Marco, uh, and Ian Hamilton, uh, Clay Galado. Uh, hope, hope that's a Lamborghini Galado. And you got you guys are the best. So if you guys haven't taken the time to leave a review, I know it's kind of a pain in the butt and and because it's iTunes, but the way you would do it is if you're on an iPhone, you can just tap the uh, the picture in the middle. Uh, I could think tap a few things and you will get into like the reviews and tap that again and then you can leave a um a review or uh in the iTunes app so like on your computer if you actually open the downloaded iTunes store search travel like a boss then click the reviews and leave write a review and then click five stars and write a review that helps me more than anything so thank you guys so much for that uh, yeah, and I, I think I heard you. Uh, you just said uh, to me yesterday you'd yeah. give a little discount on your course uh, to people give you a good review on uh, on yeah. iTunes. Uh, okay. That, yeah, I could. I could I definitely do that? that. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. So if you leave a uh, a review on on iTunes and you buy the course, just send me an email and I'll credit you guys back. Uh, or I'll give you some. Maybe maybe I'll give you something for free. That's an even better bonus. Oh, great, great. So go ahead and do that. Great, great advice, Max. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, and I will see all of you next week. Okay, thanks so much for inviting me, man. Merci, au revoir. Thank you for listening to the Travel Like a Boss podcast. If you want to hear more, including the bonus, how to choose the perfect niche episode, join our mailing list at travellikeabosspodcast.com. See you next week, and remember, if you want to travel like a boss, you need to be your own boss. So start your online business today and start living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of.